Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motor Homes and today I'm going to be showing you around your Auto Trail Apache 634 SE. You've got your high level brake light, your reversing camera which is built in there, your bike rack so to operate your bike rack. Pull it down, first bike through the little arm, cross bars through here and then second bike attached to your wheels and then you can strap them together with additional straps should you require. You've then got your bottom compartment which opens with the funny little key go into here then lifts up and underneath there you have your spare wheel and storage and then that just locks either side coming round to the passenger side got your storage underneath your rear seat, got some good size storage which goes back as well so you've got your boiler on that side and your water pump under there and a good bit of storage. These all lock with the round shape key like so and then that's how lock when you can't push them in. This, you've got your gas points, this is your barbecue point, so you get your bullfinch um, gas point which clips into there, you then turn it on, make sure it's got a jubilee clip and some gas pipe and you can um, use it for your caddock or your external barbecue point. You've got your fridge vent which come with covers which I will show you now. So you get your two covers. These go on in the winter time. You can then use the van with them on. It just protects the elements. So anything from October onwards. So they both go on the same way. So you've got your small one and your bigger one. And then key your coin into there. Turn them on both. And they're on. And then you can still operate the fridge with them on. Some people put these on when washing the van as well. Just to stop the going in coming into the, into the door there to operate your step you've got a little switch here so push the switch operates your entrance step behind the passenger door you have your gas to you open this same key as the back and open this is where your gas flow bottles are so to fill take the cover off Get the LPG um, filler, push it in, it is like a gun, so it's a bayonet fitting. Turn the front and pull the trigger, it will then fill until it stops and then these are full. So turn them on and off, use here, this here, and it is, you can then choose which bottle, by either point at the front, which being the 11, or point at the back, which being the 6. You can see on the top of the 11 which is full and then you can turn it on at the top of the back for the 6. Coming to filling the van with diesel, so use the main fade ignition key in here, turn it and then open and then fill, put it back on to the clicks and then turn the key quarter of a turn and that's locked. In the passenger side on the slam panel there you've got your tyre pressures so you've got five bar front five and a half back 72.3 front or 79.5 back underneath the passenger seat you've got your tool kit so this just lifts out this has got everything to change a wheel be towed away and it's got a screwdriver so jack and a brace tow and eye and a screwdriver underneath the floor with a bean of fate you have got your engine battery so this is where this lives but there is a jumping point from underneath the bonnet and the bonnet release is on the passenger side door here so your weight of your vehicle so this is when it was a chassis car this is when it was secondary converted so it is three and a half ton if it was to tow anything, you can tow up to 4, 6, 20. 
and then you've got front and back axle weight if you need any paint standard fade color there's your paint code you've got your radiator fluid brake fluid power steering fluid and your screen wash your oil and your oil filler and then you've got your under here you've got your positive for a jump start and on the front there next to the headlight you've got your negative so that's where you would jump the vehicle from and you've also got on this plate your chassis number which is then also displayed on the window there coming round behind the driver's door this is where your Measure batteries there, so you've got two measure batteries there, which are 75 amp each. There are two leisure batteries, and then locks like so. so if you ever need to change them, they're in there. This is your grey wastewater, so normally on the way out of a site, you drive over a motorhome service bay and you let it out. This is just the water we've tested the van with. It's a good idea to leave it open when travelling because the camber of the road um, rocking the van will allow any water in the tank to drain. In the winter, when winterising the van, you do want this to stay open and you want this to be drained because you don't want that water to freeze in the tank because it will split. Coming up to the toilet, so this opens with the same key as the back locker, which is the round key. So push the catches in. Take the handle, pull out the You'll only get it out if the slide is shut. And then take the cap off, go to the waste disposal point, press the button which just allows a little bit of air in stock to glug in and tip away. Once you have emptied it, rinse it with, there's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a shake, rinse it out again. If you are using the liquid, and that's your measuring stick, a cap full of that into here. If you are using the tablets, which are like dishwasher tablets, then once you have rinsed it out, put a pint of fresh water in, push it straight into the van, and drop a tablet straight down the toilet, and that is only one tablet per cassette, and it's ready for use. This is your hookup, so this is when hooking the vehicle up, so when you arrive on site or you're at home and you want to charge the van, get your hookup lead. Lift the, lift the catch back. Slide, let, allow the catch to slide on top of the hookup device to push on. It up. Always hook the van up first, then the site. Because we don't want you walking around with a live lead, or if your lead is damaged, you will get an electric shock. So please keep that in mind. When you're unhooking, press the lever here and just simply pull out. To fill up with fresh water, Take the cover off, so this is a cap for your fresh water which is behind your driver's rear wheel. One of these keys does your lockers, one of these keys does your water filler, so you can lock it to stop anyone tampering with your water, which is key number, it's the fifth. So put your hose pipe into here until it overflows or you can happy you've got enough by using the levels inside on the control panel it's always good to carry hose pipe and some connections with you because most campsites are just a brass tap if you are while camping you'll have to take a full tank of water if you're not just tend to travel with 20 litres at the max to stop off use the toilet and um, have a cup of tea because it keeps it down on weight and also improves the fuel below the right of the wheel so you've got your water in this is your fresh water drain so when draining the vehicle, you just open it up and then the water, the water will drain it. Sorry, it's this one here. Where is it better? So it drains the, so you pull it down and this, you'd stop over the motor ho home service area as well and drain that. Leave that open in the winter, drain all your water out in the winter. It is very crucial that you do so you're fresh your waste and your boiler which I'll show you in a minute every water every bit of water has to stay out the vehicle because if it freezes it can cause problems also open all your mixer taps or your um, sink 
your hand basin or shower tape, leave, the, leave them open, take your shower hose off, get all the water out the U-bend of the shower hose, get your, um, take all the water out your cassette, clean it, put it back in empty, and then underneath here, this tap here is, your, so your boiler's in here, it holds 10 litres of water at any one time. You don't want that 10 litres of water to be in from when not using the van. So especially in um, the colder months. So from October onwards till about spring, you want all the water to be out. So just lift the tap, do it without the pump on, and the water will just drain directly underneath the chassis. Allow it to stay open during the winter months if you are storing it or you're not using it do this and then when you do come to reuse it put it down fill it up with water go in put the power on turn the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll automatically get cold water go to the hot a cough it'll sprutter what it's doing is it's drawing the air out the boiler once you've got a steady flow on one tap do them all and then your water pump and boiler is primed but when draining do it without with the power off because if you put the pump on what it will do is it will um, try and pump the water back in while we're under here there's two switches up here so these are your electric side to your heating so you've got your closest to the closest to the van inside the van you've got your ultra store so turn that on heat your water and then this one you've got your ultra heat um, with your ultra store if there's no water on board turn it off if you are hooked up otherwise it, it is like a kettle it will just fry the pump and the element out and then you do also have a good bit of storage underneath there rear shower so connect your shower in and turn it on it's hot or cold the pump must be on to use a shower so this is good for the bikes the kids the dogs the boots the wellies for cleaning them all off before storing them and then this is very important this is a truma vent cover so if you are heating the van on gas or heating the water on gas you must lift the cowl off so put some pressure on here and then put your thumb in the middle and peel it off this is the exhaust for your heating for on gas on electric this can be on when traveling put it on when cleaning put it on it's up to you but when on gas it must come off otherwise your heating system will simply fail once inside the vehicle to get main power on either 12 volt when not hooked up or 240 when you have the electric hookup in press the on button this will then show the level of your leisure battery as selected to surface your taps, toilets, and outdoor shower, put the pump on. You'll hear this pressure rise. Only put the pump on if you've got water in the tank. The aux is your auxiliary awning light. So this is for the light outside the van. So when it's getting a bit dark, you can put that on. Or if you go for a walk, and you want to see the van when you're coming back put the light on down here always leave it on leisure battery but if you do need to you can switch it to vehicle battery it'll then show the reading but i wouldn't advise that because if you drain your vehicle battery your engine won't start and you'll not be able to continue your holiday so just leave it on leisure next to the vehicle battery is your water level so this is your fresh water so there you've got about half a tank of fresh water on board. This will go red when the fresh is empty and requires to be changed. And next to it, you've got your waste water. So this is the water you've used. So your dishes water, your shower and water and your hand basin water all goes into a waste holding tank and that is your waste level there. Coming across to your other control panel, this is your Truma Ultra Heat and Ultra Store. Ultra Store stores water, Ultra Heat heats the van. So to operate the Ultra Store, which is on gas, as it's got the gas flame, turn down the gas flame and you can put the temperature of the water from 70 to 30. So this is the temperature of your water 
on gas so you do only use your gas if you are wild camping or you wanted to heat your water quicker you can use gas and electric both together but this is just on gas and then all, all is off and then coming along to the ultra heat this is on 230 volts so this is on mains hookup power so it'll only work when you're hooked up on a site turn up to 2000 which is two kilowatts which you can use in this country you've then got one to nine which is your temperature so nine's about 30 degrees going down from 2000 watts you've got off 500 which is half a kilowatt and a kilowatt you may have to use these if you are drawing bigger power using a kettle or toaster or you're abroad in the van trips out try turning your power down and it might not trip and that is your control panels this is your hot, hot water working when winterizing leave the mixer tap in the kitchen bathroom and shower in the middle position and leave it open this will allow any water that's left in the pipe to filter its way out this is how to operate your Dometic fridge so you've got a travel catch there which locks the door when traveling stops it opening and then here you've got your energy source so you've got gas 240 electric and 12 volt which is designed to keep the fridge at the temperature that it was before departing so the idea is to um, hook the van up the night before you go away put your food in let it cool down overnight and then when you are ready to start traveling just put it onto the 12 volt setting which sends a feed from the alternator and keeps the fridge cool when traveling coming back up you've got your 240 electric so this is when you are hooked up on site and you've got your um, yellow cable in the side of the vehicle or you've got your gas which self ignites you'll hear it click in there it self ignites so just make sure your gas is open otherwise this will go red which indica indicates you've run out of gas or your gas bottle is not open coming to this side you've got your temperature so this is your temperature of your fridge so that being warm to the coldest setting and then you've got your fridge and your freezer box there with the ice tree in there to operate your oven so you've got your three gas one two forty when hooked up electric hot plate to operate you've got your three three gas there one electric here which is indicated by the light once you have had this on and um, for a length of time let it cool down before you put the glass lid down and then below you've got your grill so allow the thermocouple to get warm before you release the switch when traveling take your oven and grill pan out or wrap them up as this is where the rattles do come from and then you do have your oven there as well so do remove the shelves when traveling and then if you ever need any parts for your oven this is where you to get your part number from and below You've got your gas tabs again same as in your kitchen you can isolate each appliance there should you need to best thing to do is isolate it at the bottle to be safe but these are more for when the vehicle is habitation checked just to make sure the gas is working safely and you do have your 240 plug for your electric hot plate there so if that's given you any problems you can switch it off and you've got some storage as well to operate your truma gas fire on this side this is your gas so this is for heating the van on gas so simply push down and turn it will self ignite and you'll hear it roar like so you can check through the pilot hole here for the gas flame and at this side of the fire this is your 12 volt assisted fan so coming down at the bottom you've got a which is automatic which means that it will convect through the air ducting 
towards the back of the van and round the front of the van and in the bathroom. And once it gets to the designated temperature, it will continue to keep going. The off means it will convect out the front of the fire. So this is more for when while camping and you don't want to use the 12 volt supply for the fan and save a bit of um, power, it will convect out the front. And then you've got manual, which will blow around the van and it will keep continuously going once it has hit the temperature where it's automatic it, once it's hit 30 degrees or whatever you've set it at it will stop wait until it drops down and then kick back in and then you've got one to five which is your fan speed okay. to operate your microwave same as a household microwave you must be hooked up it's not a 12 volt microwave there is no inverter and then you can use it and if you ever have to remove it for storage or you don't want it or you want to change it simply unplugs here and lifts out cool. Go to operate your roof light skylight above your uh, lounge simply wind it to up and wind it shut do make sure it is closed when traveling as wind can damage these and then you do have your blackout blind and fly screen on the window there. To operate your view cube sat system, press the button with the control panel on. It will then run through its cycle. And then it indicates the light there once that light goes solid. It has locked on and found Astro 2. Next to it, you do have your solar panel. So this is, again, you don't need to do anything with it. You can see it's charging. Next to your TV aerial in the cupboard, next to it is your Vision Plus digital amplifier. So this is your TV booster. You don't have to do anything with it goes on and off with the main control panel in the cupboard above your rear lounge um, driver's side is your aerial so to use your aerial always make sure that when you are traveling the aerial is pulled in by loosening the nut and pulling down on it that's pulled in there and tightening it and then when you want to use it loosen it off push it up and then use the toggle which tilts the aerial to find the best signal you can and you can also turn it but the tip is look where the other motorhomes and caravans areas are pointing and you should get a good signal to use your windows push the buttons in on the catches lift the levers slide the window out it will then stay out push it all the way up to release make sure when you are traveling that all the windows and skylights are closed and locked properly and then you do have your blackout blind and fly screen there which just clip together in the one clip press the grey catch and you've got your curtains as well to make the double bed pull down the, the hatch pull the runners out lift the cushions up and lift these over the top of the here you then use the backrests into here <laughs> and there you have your double bed it is a good idea to turn everything to the opposite side as you get the flat side of the cushion and you can put a fitted sheet and your duvets on top. In the cupboard beside the fridge underneath the sink, you'll find two gas taps, one for your fridge and one for your external barbecue point. These are for isolating each appliance, but they are mainly for when the vehicle gets habitation serviced and gas checked. And to the other side, you've got your um, 240 socket for your fridge. So if you ever get a problem with your fridge, you can turn it off and unplug it if needed. And you've got your storage there with your cutlery drawer above. 
If you do require to turn the seat, pull the little lever here and the seat will turn around. If it does get stuck on the door or the front, reposition your driving position and then you do have your um, lumbar support and then you've got your back and front so it will lift the back and the front of the seat forward for your passenger and on your driver to get yourself comfy for your journey ahead. Once inside the cab you have got your main windscreen blinds which just pinch and slide out and meet in the middle. They are just magnetic so the best bet is to put a clip round the two handles so a bobble or elastic band as the littlest bit of motion and they will ping open because they are just a magnetic and then you've got the same on your doors so pinch it slide the bottom out first and that does your driver and passenger door whilst we're on the driver's side you've got your handbrake to your right you have your electric windows and your mirror adjustments which does the top mirror and the blind spot you've got a cup holder you've got your headlight adjustment here and mode which goes further into this screen which is all explained in your handbook this switch here which says camera goes onto your head unit so if you pop that on it means that when you're traveling you can have the camera on permanently and you can see down the back of the van like so <laughs> so it means you've got a rear view at all times you can then turn this off and it will just return to the radio to operate the the head unit this switch here turns the head unit on and off you've got your temperature and fan speed aircon distribution and circulation you've got your heated mirrors fog lights which are rear hazards this locks and unlocks the door it also takes the step in so it does lock your habitation door and then below you've got a large storage bin with the usb input for the head unit and then here you've got two us um two 12 volt points one being the bigger one got a six speed gearbox with lift and up the collar for reverse which then displays on the head unit glove box there and storage here which is work, works through the air conditioning and heating system so if you've got anything cool for the road such as sweets chocolate little cans of pop put them in there put the aircon on they'll be lovely and cool in no time clipboard for bits of paper site reservations on there you've got your fuel your temperature your miles per gallon your rev count and then when you do start the vehicle you can then press on your wipers indicators and lights cruise control you can then click the trip com button and go through the tip trip computer so you've got your range there so there's 106 mile of fuel in the tank 22 mile, 18.9 miles per gallon, 11 mile um, average speed, and the traveling times, and then your miles there. And that is your Fiat Decato base unit.